Our first uh, guest tonight is one of the leading actors in the entire world. He has been nominated for his seventh Best Actor Oscar for his work in My Favorite Year. And his 1972 film, The Ruling Class, is just about to be re-released. Please welcome Mr. Peter O'Toole. Quite an entrance. Very nice. How are, how are you? Interesting. <laughs> uh, now, let me explain something to folks uh, who are now watching this a week after the fact. This is actually being taped the night of the Academy Awards presentation in Los Angeles. Oh, that's deconfusing. Yes. And uh, a, a, with that in mind, quite obviously, you are not there. Ha! <laughs> <laughs> no, I am here. Yeah. And, uh... Whatever here, isn't it? Yes. Uh, now, I is there a reason that you are not, uh... There. Yeah. Because I'm here. Uh, there is. Uh-huh. Um, I was in, uh, Toronto. Uh, until... What day is it? Today is Monday. Monday. April 11. Uh, till Saturday. Mm hmm A tape recording, um, uh... Um, a television of, um... Excuse me, Pygmalion. And, um... A, I, a good gift for you would be a lighter, if anybody is, <laughs> is interested, I guess. Oddly enough... Well, there you go. Eh? All right, now, it's you were... Simple sense of frugality. Yeah. Um... Um, I, well, but yes, I, uh, tape recording, uh, t taping, mm -hmm. uh, Pygmalion. And I came to New York to catch an airplane, which I will be catching in another hour and a quarter, mm -hmm. to Ireland. And the reason I will not be at the awards, though there's no discourtesy to the Academy, far from it, um, is that I uh, had a great blessing on March the 17th, on St. Patrick's Day, a son was born. On St. Patrick's Day, that's very nice. And, um, his, um, his mother, very clever mother to have a baby on St. Patrick's Day, <laughs> is, is uh, United, from the United States, uh -huh. from a, a family from the East Coast has been here for years and years, so we have an Irish-American son. Yes. But I've only seen him for about five hours, and her, and I had to leave Ireland to go to Toronto yep. to record the thing. And I'm on my way back to Ireland. That's why. Well, I, I can respect that. Now, Priorities. Let me, let me ask you, if you win tonight the Academy Award, have you already selected somebody to accept the award for you? You know how they always say, accepting for Mr. O'Toole? How does that work? Well, I shan't win. You don't think you win? No. Hmm. <laughs> So then I guess you didn't select somebody to pick it up for you. No, I thought that would be unimportant. Yeah. It is if I wasn't going to. Now, what, now uh, uh, well, this is interesting. Why don't you think you'll uh, win? Um, uh, the, the odds in Las Vegas are 9 to 1 against. Oh. And I'm a bookie's son. <laughs> Enough said on that. Now, uh, we, we have to, uh, Peter, we have to go away for station identification. Uh, but when we return, uh, perhaps you can tell us, although this will be when people see it a week after the fact, what you feel, uh, who you think the winner might be if you're taking yourself out of the race. Uh -huh. Okay. All right. <laughs> we'll be right back with Peter O'Toole. Back, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Peter O'Toole is here tomorrow night. Uh, George Miller will be here, also the author of How Life Imitates the World Series, Tom Boswell, and uh, Zippy the chimp. Also, later on tonight, uh, Phoebe Snow will be here. Peter, uh, again, I want to thank you for being here because Phoebe I, Snow? Phoebe Snow is here tonight. She really? Yes, sir. Oh, I think she's wonderful. You enjoy, you enjoy her work? Very much. Oh, and that's I nice. I enjoy that guitarist. That, you're brilliant. Hiram Bullock. Uh, 
And I know you're on a tight travel arrangement, so I'm very grateful that you could spend some time here tonight. Now, about the Academy Awards, since uh, you feel that 9 to 1, you don't really stand a, a good chance, who do you think will uh, win the uh, award for Best Actor tonight? I hope um, that it will be Paul Newman. Yeah. And you have been nominated for this award, this will be your seventh time? It will. And, and, the, f and the fact that uh, if you do not win, does, is this discouraging to be nominated seven times? Oh, no, it's very encouraging. I mean, it means, you know, somebody's thinking of me. Yeah. Uh, uh, <laughs> Go right ahead. Uh, now, you were in the, in, the, in the film, my favorite year, you played Alan Swan, mm -hmm. obviously. Uh, a man, a, a hellraiser, uh, a, a guy who drank and uh, enjoyed a good time. Is there, is there anything like that in your background that, that, that would help you execute that role? Oh, I had a little rehearsal. <laughs> uh, For a few years, yeah. <laughs> any, any episode come to mind that you could share with us at this time? Um... Hmm. <laughs> um... It, 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 uh, if you've seen the film... You yes, sir, I've uh, seen it and enjoyed it. Well, there's a scene of climbing a building. Oh, yes, yes. Well, many years ago, uh, Richard Harris and myself, we were students together. And at about three in the morning, he thought it would be a very good idea to pay a visit to some ladies who lived on the top of a very high building. <laughs> um, and the only way of getting up there was to climb. And it was huge. Yeah. huge. And we both had a drain pipe each. <laughs> <laughs> and up we got, and I did in manage to get to this window, which happened to be open, and I walked in as a very al alarmed ladies for a little romantic encounter. Now, uh, uh, and I looked below, and Richard's drain pipe had broken. <laughs> <laughs> and he could neither go up nor down. Yeah. So I suggested to the ladies that we should telephone the police and say there was an Irish hooligan trying to enter the building. Yeah, have him arrested, sure, doing time. Um, uh, when you, uh, now, are you, is, you're wearing green socks tonight, aren't you? I am. Yeah. You, do you always wear green socks? I do. Uh, why is that? Um. <laughs> they're, they're dark green in, uh, on this particular occasion, aren't they? Uh, it, it, is, it was, probably still is, considered unlucky to wear green at a race meeting. That's right. Um, and this was pointed out to me with considerable severity by my father. Um, but I uh, have a talent for disobedience. And um, I thought, how on earth can I wear green without that old bugger knowing? <laughs> Socks. Socks. Now, and, now tell, you, you mentioned your father was a bookie, and you guys traveled around together, didn't you? All over, yeah. From From what time, how old were you when you first started going out uh, on trips with your dad? Five weeks. And and he would visit the, the various uh, race uh, tracks or meet Tracks or? in Ireland and England and France. Uh-huh. Yeah. And uh, so you were born in Ireland but ended up uh, being raised in England. I spent the war years in England, that was all. Yeah. yeah. Tell me about the, uh, I was reading an interesting article this afternoon about uh, the first time you met uh, Catherine Hepburn. <laughs> <laughs> He's a bad man. No, is it? <laughs> is that a, uh, a true story? If it's the one uh, we're thinking of? It is. All right, uh, uh, tell the folks that. What is your name? Dave. <laughs> I'm Dave. I'm, I'm Dave. Your surname? Uh, Letterman. Dave Letterman. Letterman. Yes, sir. Not O oh, Letterman by any Oh, time. no, 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 no. I, although it, it could be if it would help, if it would. <laughs> oh, dear. Um, if Kate's watching this, and, um, I was in a play in London uh, 
called The Long, The Short and The Tall, about um, young soldiers. And um, it, the dressing rooms, which is invariably the case, were pretty primitive, and they weren't supplied with bathrooms. And I was in the sink. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean... And the uh, voice said, Good evening, my name is Kate Hepburn. <laughs> so I did a lot of pretending hand-washing acting. <laughs> <laughs> An attempt to replace... Yeah, there's no chance that the great lady was there for the same purpose, is there? That's <laughs> awful, awful notion. Um, Peter, if you can hang around a, a moment longer, we have to go away for a commercial, but we'll be right back, sir. More with uh, Peter O'Toole. <laughs> Thank you very much. Peter O'Toole is here uh, on his way to Ireland, and uh, you have two watches on, I believe, don't you? Is there any reason for that? Now, I was asked this earlier today, so I don't tell you the reason. Who, oh, somebody else asked you this? Mm. Who asked you this? An, a, another journalist. Oh, oh a journalist. Well, <laughs> that, more of that was probably your first journalist of the day, then. Uh, uh, now, um, you can't tell us why? It's the same answer. That's all right. Um, I don't wish to waste time looking at the wrong wrist. <laughs> I know. I, that does. Uh, that that kind of delay can be costly sometimes. You just uh, tell us about um, the the movie that is now being uh, re-released. <laughs> the ruling class. Yes, sir. Um, what would you like to know? Tell us uh, why is it being re-released? It was originally released in the seventies, wasn't it? It was. Yeah. Um. Why, um, uh, embassy firms have decided to re-release it at the, uh, the twin, Lowe's twin here in New uh -huh. York and in Los Angeles. Um, I imagine the, 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 the um, fundamental reason is to earn some money. Um, uh, but, uh, I, I, th I think at the time, uh, it's a, an extraordinarily funny film. Um, uh, and it was, um, received a great deal of critical acclaim in Europe and was chosen as, um, oh, it became very posh, if you follow me, and became a, was a, the, the British entry for the can jug or whatever it is. <laughs> the, the can jug, huh? And, um, <laughs> It became over bloated and, and uh, overblown, and, and uh, it was made by a, a bunch of friends who l wanted to do this particular outrageous material. Um, for we felt it was a kind of summation of the 60s. Yeah. Um, it's a, a great whizzing fizz of words and images. Um, and it gave me a, the chance to play Jesus Christ and Jack the Ripper. Um, and also, uh, it was said of it that it was ahead of its time. Uh, maybe now it is the time. Okay. Um, we, we have uh, a couple of uh, minutes from the film, Peter. For Do the things that were considered to be uh, outrageous in it, since the, the, God bless them, the Python boys and whatever, they mm -hmm. punched a hole into, you know, the accepted yeah. mores of the time. And this may just slide in nicely, All right. too. Do you, do you know what, uh, what is on the film we're going to look at here? Not the foggies. Okay, uh, it's, it's pretty much uh, self-explanatory, then, I understand. Uh, this is from The Ruling Class, the uh, Peter O'Toole film, uh, currently in re-release. ...to fear for the reintroduction of the death penalty. Bravo. You mean there's no death penalty in England, green and pleasant? Well, surely you knew well, that they were a bit out of touch. But the hangman holds our society together. 
He is the symbol of the great chastiser. He built this world on punishment and fear. Snap out fear and see what follows. Sons strike their doddering dads. Young girls show their ankles and bosoms and say rude things about the queen. Anything goes, and they do it openly in the streets and frighten the horses. It's the time. What can we do about it? Bring back fear. Yeah. yeah. In the old days, the executioner kept the common herd in order. When he stood on his gallows, you knew God was in his heaven, more right for the world. The punishment for blaspheming was to be broken on the wheel. First the fibula, crack. And the tibia, patella, and femur, crack, crack, crack. And the corpus, ulna, and radius, crack. Disconnect them bones and dry bones. Disconnect them bones and dry bones. Disconnect them bones and dry bones. Now hear the word of the Lord. Well, your hip bone connected to your neck bone. Your neck bone connected to your shoulder bone. Your shoulder bone's connected to your back bone. Your back bone's connected to your hip bone. Your hip bone's connected to your thigh bone. Now hear the word of the Lord. Then Great. Very interesting. Very silly. Looks like a lot of fun. Um, again, I want to. Uh, I know things. Uh, your schedule is very difficult, and I appreciate you taking the time to come over. It was a thrill to meet you, and I've certainly enjoyed your work uh, for a long time. And thanks again. Is there anything you'd like to leave us with before uh, we whisk you to the airport? Um, it, it is so long ago. It's what twelve years. Um, that group of people were a real hunt um, and we turned up merely and didn't tell them what was going to happen mm -hmm. there were two or three axes dotted around and I began that speech and people were saying hear her <laughs> hear her bring back the rack <laughs> and, uh, before we did the scene and we all come tossing out of the, of the pub, w w in came this lady with a huge amount of uh, documents, which was a, a petition to bring back capital punishment. There you go, yeah. And she'd taken it to think, and, and would I sign it? I said, certainly I signed it. Mycroft Holmes, which is Sherlock Holmes' brother. Uh -huh. <laughs> That's all. Uh, have a nice trip. Well, nice meeting you, sir. Peter O'Toole, ladies and gentlemen. We'll be right back with C.B. Snow.